So we're going to look at planting a tree. Uh, this can be a shrub as well if you wanted to. We're going to look at the time of year that you plant. We're going to look at the position you should uh, think about when you're going to plant and how to plant. The actually preparing the hole, uh, how deep you're going to make it and how you prepare the plant to put into the hole to plant. So welcome to the Sahara Helios YouTube channel and we'll get on and plant our tree. Okay, the tools you're gonna to need for this job, you're gonna need a nice sturdy spade, something like this, uh, and then a fork, something like a border fork, so a broader fork, like that. Um, and also carry with you a pair of secateurs, just in case your tree needs a little bit of pruning to prepare it for the ground. So when to plant your tree is quite an important question. You really need to plant trees when they're in the most dormant stage they're in. So that's gonna be in the winter, also, you need it to be nice and moist and cool so that the plant isn't stressed. So we plant all our trees between November and February. So it's pretty cold season to be out in the garden planting trees, but it's the best time to be planting them. Okay, so this is the tree we're gonna to plant today. And you can see it's only about five, five foot or so tall. It's a nice young sapling to be put in into the ground. And you might be intrigued by the sort of pot that we're using. This is called a root trainer. And it's a very special kind of pot. It's basically a strip of plastic with these holes in, and then you can see a, a mesh bottom. And what this does is it trains, literally trains the roots to grow towards the, the holes and then prunes them off, the air prunes them off. And what this does is it makes a much more fibrous root system around the base of the tree, which makes a wider surface area for the tree to, to take up moisture and nutrients and a much more healthier tree can grow that way. So we really swear by these and we use these quite a lot these days rather than a normal pot. It also means that you don't have to pull the roots out, which is quite a, a vigorous thing to do to a young plant, but is necessary to make sure that the roots spread out, but you don't have to do that with this. Uh, that's where they're very handy. So we're planting today this tree, which is an ulmus, which is an elm a type of elm, and we're going to put it in the ground here today. So now you've got your tree, you've got to consider the position to put it in and what your tree is going to eventually look like when it's fully grown. So this is an elm. It's going to be a large tree, so we want a nice position where it's not going to be crowded by anything else. So here, in this open field, it's just right for it. It's also a tree that requires a lot of light to do well, so you don't want a shady spot or anything overshadowing it. So it's gonna get full sun in this position and it's perfect for that. Do consider the final height of your tree or shrub when you are planting, that it's got space to grow. So I've prepared the hole already, as you can see here, and there's a few things to note when you are planting a tree. Preparation is very important. So what we do with any sort of hole that you make, you've got to make sure that the sides of the hole are well forked. So we take a, a border fork or similar and just fork down the edges of the hole. And you might think, what's that all about? Well, basically, so the tree can get a grip. If you make them uh, very uh, smooth edges, the roots won't get in so easily. So this just makes it a nicer grip for the young roots to get a hold of. So it's quite important to do that rough down the hole a little bit. Then what you might want to do, and it's personal choice, we tend to do a little bit, is put a little bit of organic material in there. So we have some compost. You can use homemade compost or anything you like. Nothing that's too strong, so maybe not rotted compost or anything like that, but just uh, out of your bin and just throw it into the bottom of the hole. Not a lot, just a handful. And that will just give the tree a little bit of a start in life. Okay, so now we're gonna put the tree into the hole. Before we take it out of the pot, we've just got to talk a little bit about the, the depth of the hole. A lot of the time people would make holes far too deep and you don't need to. It does depend a lot on your soil type, but here in this area that we're planted today, the soil is quite wet. It does get keep quite wet through most of the year. That means that anything you plant is gonna sink slightly. So you don't wanna to go too deep here. So our hole is actually quite shallow. And what it'll do is it'll mean that the plant, when you sit it in the hole, will be standing proud a little bit, but that's fine because over time it will sink. Uh, to its correct position. So rather that than you have a dip in the soil if you plant it too deep, because the water will then sit in that dip. So higher is better than lower. So I'm gonna take it out of the pot, and this is what's nice about these root training pots, is they just come off straight like that, 
and the bottom just slips off there. And then you can see all the young, young fibrous roots are growing uh, towards the holes or where the holes have been. And that's a really lovely root system. And I can put this plant then straight into the ground. As I position it, I position it in the center of the hole. And you can see the hole I've made, which is a square here, is a lot bigger than the actual tree itself. You want to give it lots of space so you can backfill and put more organic material in if you want to. Um, but it will definitely make a much more secure hole for the plant. Now for me that's a little bit low still, shallow in the ground, so what I'm probably going to do is stick a bit more soil in first so the tree will still sit slightly higher than that in the ground. So not everybody will be planting something which has a root trainer, so if you get your plant from a garden centre and it comes in a normal pot, there is a way that you need to treat it before you plant it, and that is to pull the roots out. So this is where the secateurs come in quite handy. Now secateurs have a blunt and a sharp bit. The blunt bit you can use to pull out the roots, or if you have a small garden fork that will help as well. But all you do is you go into the roots and you pull them out with your fork, make sure they're nicely pulled out. These ones are out already, but pull them out, cut them out, so they're all spreading, and then that's when it's ready to go into the hole. And you must do that with any tree and shrub that you plant. Another little element you can think about when you're planting, and this is traditional for roses, but it's good for all sorts of plants when you're planting, especially woody plants like trees and shrubs, and that's using mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza is a friendly fungus that you can use around the roots of plants to help encourage root growth. It's just a fine dust, and you can just dust that around the plant just before you plant it, and make sure it gets onto the roots of the plant. And what this will do is that it will increase the surface area of the young fibrous roots here and so they can take up much more water and nutrients from the soil and make a much healthier plant. So it's a really good idea to add mycorrhiza if you can get it. So now is to backfill the hole. So that's basically put back the soil you took out when you dug the hole. Now like I said before you want to put in a little organic material at the base of the plant but you don't want to smother it with organic material. You want it to get used to uh, its natural soil that it's going to live in for the rest of its life. So you want to feed a little bit but not too much. And then firming down is very important. Traditionally we use the heel to push the plant into the ground and establish it. You know, you'll notice at the moment I've got loads of compost around the base of the plant. We're going to move that away in a minute though. So you want to brush it away from the main stem. You want the main stem to be nice and clear. And then we'll be filling around the edges of the hole. And what you can do is you can also put a protective and decorative mulch around of bark chippings if you want to, just to stop weeds and grasses intruding on the tree at its base in the first few years of life. And what I've done here as well as you might notice I've put down some hessian that I put the uh, soil onto, not just onto the grass, so the grass is going to be nice and tidy under there when I take the hessian away, so you can keep the surrounding area neat as well. You don't have to be trying to brush away mud from the tree. Now this is a small tree and it probably doesn't need a stake. A larger tree you might want to stake so it doesn't move around too much, but actually natural movement is quite important for a tree so it establishes better in the ground. You don't want it waving around lots, but natural movement from the wind bashing against it isn't a bad thing. However, a large tree, because of the weight, could fall over and pull the roots out of the ground, so a stake is important then. And usually you would do a stake at an angle rather than straight up, unless you're trying to train a leader. A leader would be the top of the tree where you get a nice straight tree. If your tree's sort of bending over, you might want to put a cane in to train it upright, but usually a supportive stake would go at an angle. This one I'm not going to put a stake in because it's a nice small tree and it can establish itself in the ground better like this. 
So I hope you've enjoyed our video today and I hope it's been useful for you. Do come and see us at the Sir Harold Hillier Gardens and do subscribe to our YouTube channel and we hope to see you soon.